Imagine the ideal version of yourself. Maybe you have more time to do what you love. Maybe you're healthier, or maybe you're wealthier. Now, compare that ideal version of yourself to your current self. What's the difference? Yes, you might have more money, more friends, more time on your hands, but why? You'll find that what truly separates you from your best self are your habits. If we want our lives to change, we need our habits to change. Habits shape your identity. They determine the course of your life. Will bad habits squander your potential and ruin your life? Good habits will improve you little by little until eventually you've become better than you could have ever imagined. Changing your habits will change the course of your life. I promise that by the end of this speech, you will know exactly how to change your habits so you can get closer to reaching your full potential and becoming your best self. To do this, I'll cover three main points. The science behind bad habits, the habit cycle, and five rules to break bad habits for good. First, I have to get a bit nerdy and talk about the science behind bad habits. They are formed by a chemical in our brains called dopamine. Dopamine is a chemical your brain releases that makes you feel happy. It plays a critical role in the formation of bad habits because it rewards you with a feeling of satisfaction whenever you perform a habit, like working out or scrolling through social media. Now, what does dopamine have to do with becoming your best self? Well, by a show of hands, who here has ever tried to implement a good habit, like going to the gym twice a week? That's quite a lot of you. Now, be honest by another show of hands. How many of you still keep up with those habits today? Pretty much none of you. <laughs> Why is that? Is it because we don't have enough motivation or drive? No, it's not our fault. Dopamine is what makes it so hard for us to change our habits. It's the reason why we always seem to go back to our bad habits, no matter how hard we try to change. We get addicted to coffee, smoking, and eating fast food because all of these actions trigger a huge release of dopamine, much more than we get from activities like running or reading. This makes our brain try to replicate these huge releases of dopamine because to it, the more dopamine something gives you, the better it is for our survival and well-being. In the 21st century, we are exposed to such high levels of dopamine that even just concentrating on a presentation for 10 tiny minutes can be a daunting challenge to some. By show of hands, who here has a phone within their reach right now? That's pretty much everyone. I have a fun little challenge for you. Try not to touch that phone of yours for the next 10 minutes starting now. Trust me, this is a lot harder than you think it is. Now, picture this scenario. You've just woken up. You're feeling all tired and groggy. You have two ways to start your day. You can either start your day with 20 minutes of exercise or 20 minutes of social media. Which are you more likely to choose? We are more likely to choose social media because it's the action that releases more dopamine in our brains, even though we know that doing exercise is much better for our health. The brain doesn't take into account the harmful side effects of smoking and alcohol or the time lost spent on social media and video games. The brain is hardwired to focus more on instant gratification than on long-term goals. All it cares about is getting that quick burst of dopamine. The problem is, the more we repeat these actions, the more our brain tries to replicate them. This leads to many of us getting stuck in an endless loop of craving what we want, getting it, and then craving it again. Eventually, these actions become routines, and these routines become bad habits, and we are no longer able to live without repeating these unhealthy actions. So, the question is, how do we break these bad habits? I'd like to introduce a simple framework from James Clear that all good and bad habits follow. It has four very important steps. Cue, craving, response, and reward. Together, they form what I like to call the habit cycle. The cue is something in your, in your environment that triggers a craving. The craving is that motivation, that temptation to execute a response. 
The response is the action that you perform to satisfy your craving. And lastly, the response triggers a reward, which releases dopamine in our brains, making us happy and encouraging us to repeat the habit. Now, the habit cycle is running every single moment of our life. Even something as simple as your phone vibrating can lead to the same four-step process. Right now, I know that some of you are getting the craving to check your devices, have a hamburger, or go to bed. Here's another scenario. Imagine you're at a restaurant. You're having a deep conversation with friends you haven't met in a while, when suddenly you feel your phone vibrate. This, of course, triggers a temptation to know what your device is trying to tell you. So what do you do? Do you prioritize your friends? Or do you check your phone? Most people know they shouldn't. But over the course of 10, 20 minutes, they still end up checking their phone. What's the harm, right? It was just this one time we all taught ourselves. We all know deep down it isn't. Because afterwards, we feel happy because we know why our phone vibrated. And then our brains associate device vibrations with feeling happy, encouraging us to check our more phones more in the future. This can even get so bad that we get the craving to check our phones whenever we have them on us. This includes while driving, in a meeting, or even during a TED talk we're all totally paying attention to. By a show of hands, who here still hasn't checked their phone yet during this presentation? Awesome, you guys are doing great. This simple four-step cycle is the key to breaking even the strongest of bad habits and also creating good ones. Each step in this cycle is crucial for the survival of a habit. Remove a single step and the habit is toast. So after gathering data and research from many experts, including James Clear and Charles Duhigg, here are five fundamental rules for breaking bad habits. These rules will work with pretty much any bad habit and are scientifically proven to bring you closer to becoming your best self. Here's one last scenario, one that I and many other students are very familiar with. The sun has just set. You're at home on your computer. You have a ton of assignments to get done and a bunch of readings you have to finish by tomorrow. You decide you have to get everything done without staying up until 3 a.m. again. You have everything ready. You have the music on, the tabs open, the mind focused. The conditions are perfect for the best, most productive work session of your life. Then, your phone rings. Rule one to remove a cue is to make it invisible. You have to reduce your exposure to those bad cues in your environment. You turn your device off and put it in another room. That takes care of it, right? Well, it does until you get the irresistible urge to go check your phone again. Rule two to remove a craving is to make it unattractive. You have to change your mindset and focus on the benefits of avoiding your bad habits. You remind yourself that not checking your devices will allow you to sleep earlier and to finish your work ASAP. But even that doesn't work. 10 minutes later, you still find yourself glued to your device. It's time to pull out the big guns. Rule three to remove a response is to make it difficult. You have to put more steps between you and your bad habits. You've given your brother your phone and told them to hide it where you will never find it. Will that instant gratification still be instant and gratifying if it takes you an hour to find your phone? But you're not done yet. You want to make it impossible for you to get your phone back tonight. You use rule four. Rule four to remove a reward is to make it unsatisfying. Create a habit contract. You give your trustworthy brother $50. This serves as an incentive for you. If you somehow find your phone, the money is his to keep. You only get your investment back the next day once you've finished all your work. So you finish your work without any more distractions and head to bed for a good night's sleep. For the next few months, you use rule five to get rid of a bad habit for good. Rule five is to replace your bad habit. Instead of getting rid of a bad habit altogether, you have to identify the need behind it. Why do you do what you do? And create a new good habit that satisfies that need. You think about why you check your screens all the time. You realize it's to satisfy your need for social interaction. So 
You replace checking your phone with talking to a friend or a family member. Five months later, you're a different person. You no longer have an unhealthy relationship with your devices, and you only use them when necessary, not during a TED Talk. One last time, by a show of hands, who here still hasn't checked their phone at all in the last 10 minutes? Amazing. You guys did great. There's a common misconception that to change your life, you have to make drastic changes. That could not be further from the truth. The secret to changing your life is to start small. If you want to improve your fitness, for example, you have to start with a few squats every morning and eventually work your way up to going to the gym twice a week. This is the only way for your habits to last. Remember, consistency is key. These small changes to your life may seem like a waste of time right now, but remember that the course of your life is determined by these small changes. Whether you start each day with 20 minutes of exercise or 20 minutes of social media will have an enormous impact on your life in a couple of years. Over time, these small habits compound. The bottom line is, to change your life, you have to limit your intake of dopamine by making small, positive tweaks to your daily habits and routines. I'm not promising that changing your life will be easy. Obstacles are inevitable. But to truly change your life, you have to face those obstacles head on. You have to be there every single day. Each day, you choose a good habit over the bad. You take one step closer to becoming your ideal self. Habits shape your life. They shape your identity. With these five rules, you can guarantee that your life will always be changing for the better. So try this method out for yourself, or even better, try it out with your friends and your family. And if you keep on going and you persevere, then these small changes will add up. And after one year, five years, 20 years, I can truly promise you that you will reach your full potential and become your best self. Thank you.